What a year it has been, ladies and gentlemen. 2012, I mean, thank God I'm performing in this year. This is the year that London became probably the greatest city on earth. I don't know how long it's going to last. This very room, ladies and gentlemen. This very room. People won Olympic gold medals right here. This is it was incredible. We all got so patriotic. It became almost fever pitch, didn't it? I think we lost, sort of lost control. I mean, the day after the Olympics ended, we should have invaded another country. That was our time to retake the British Empire. It's quite depressing, wasn't it? When it ended, but the flame went out at the end, the final flame, and that's it, it's gone. No more Olympics. And Brazil took over. Brazil, like, we're having that, thank you. We'll have the Brazil Olympics. Then they, they, they did the little show, didn't they? Brazil. That was shit. Yes! It was! This was a street sweeper in Pele. Pathetic. We owe the Olympics. Our pride got so out of control. I think it was summed up in this lovely moment where Jessica Ennis was doing the, the long jump. And she was there, you know, before she goes, and she, she does that clapping thing where she wants everybody, the whole seat in. Come on. Goes, no, don't you do it. I'm not going to hide you. <laughs> This is the Olympics now! <laughs> and the whole crowd was like, yes, go on, Jessica, go on, Jessica. Everyone was in time. People at home were probably going, go on, Jess. She was like, I'm going to do it soon, I'm going to do it. I'm not doing it yet. So I'm going to do it in a minute, I'm going to go. I've been training four years, but is it now? No, it's not now. It could be now. <laughs> and she's ran and she's flew. Probably jumped further than she's ever jumped before because of the weight of the expectation and the excitement and the euphoria of the nation. Then her major rival steps up next, a woman from Liechtenstein, who for some reason decided to do the same thing <laughs> to the Olympic Olympic Stadium. And everyone just went, no. <laughs> Too <Didn't you be? laughs> That's the extraordinary time. And I got into all the sports. I got into sports that, let's be honest, aren't really spectator sports. I will never watch them again. But I was obsessive over them because we were winning gold medals. Like, the dressage. Is that really a sport? It's just a gay horse. It's not really a sport. It's just a gay horse. <laughs> All the horse ones were quite shit, if I'm honest. But the main question centre was just around the corner here. They were so posh. It was strange seeing sort of middle-aged, upper-class men winning gold medals. Because they were so uber, sort of, posh. They, they had those, those lips, you know, that sort of move independently. Of <laughs> They'll be saying one thing, but their lips will be doing completely the opposite. <laughs> Thousands of years of inbreeding, and basically, the lips have a life of their own at this point. Before I even wake up, the lips are moving. <laughs> Morning! <laughs> Sometimes I finish a sentence, and the lips carry on without me. Is that how they scored it? Did you get more points the more you look like the horse? Is that how they actually <laughs> competed in the aggression? <laughs> Somebody give me a carrot! <laughs> the cycling. Who knew we were so good at cycling? And why didn't they just cycle round as fast as they could? What was that weird sort of paranoid one? Where they still... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Piss off. the Taekwondo. Did you see that? Unbelievable. That's not really a sport. You, are we only allowed to use one leg during it? Fuck off. <laughs> Why are you fuck off? <laughs> this is my gold medal! <laughs> Although the beach volleyball, let's be honest, probably the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The fact that I was on the BBC in the middle of the day. 
Normally I have to be at home alone online to get this level of excitement. I don't think I ever used the pause button quite as much in my entire life. And if you ever run down any doubt of what you were supposed to be looking at, they would point to their own asses between points. This is basically the area to focus on here. And the women's I also enjoyed. I'm kidding. Maybe. Even Andy Murray won. That's when I knew something was up. When Andy Murray... When Andy Murray caught the Team GB bug, he hasn't even lost since. He's incredible. I actually met Andy Murray once. I met him in a restaurant. I don't know him. He was eating. I was eating. I saw him. He was quite inconspicuous because he was in his home clothes. We've never seen him in his home clothes. He had like a polo neck. He was eating a plate full of normal food. It's not like he was sitting in his, you know, in his kit. With a towel over his head, having a banana. <laughs> I think it's Andy Murray on table four. <laughs> Asking for the napkin and just throwing it back. Selecting potatoes. <laughs> These two are fine. That one can piss off. <laughs> I'm sure it's Andy Murray. So I went over to his table, he was sitting there with his girlfriend, you've probably seen her, very pretty girl, she was sitting there, he was sitting there, there was two other people sitting there, and I just went opposite him, I don't know him, I just thought, you know, I'd say hello. I should have said excuse me, sorry to bother you, these are the classic ways to interrupt people who don't know, but I sort of panicked, I just identified him, I just went, Andy Murray. <laughs> he stopped eating and went, Michael McIntyre. I said, I love you, Andy Murray. He said, I love, I love you, Michael McIntyre. He said, I came to see Wimbledon. He's like, I've got your DVD. <laughs> so I said, I'm my favourite tennis player. He said, you're my favourite comedian. Anyway, we kept exchanging all these compliments. And I looked over at his girlfriend and she was doing this. <laughs> Can I see some From the umpire. Seriously, what kind of a job is tennis umpiring? <laughs> Any baby could do that. They just sit in a high chair saying, Juice. That's my favorite joke. <laughs> 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 but let's be honest, I think personally, of all the heroes this year, and there have been many, the Queen has surpassed herself. <laughs> that whole. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Bond. Are you kidding? <laughs> She was in James Bond. She parachuted into the Olympic Stadium. Our Queen did that. What a hilarious nation we are. I love that. This also in her Jubilee year, 86 years old. She's been on three and 60 years. We have celebrated her Jubilee. You probably remember that in London. That was fun. I'm glad she survived it. I mean, the first day we put her in a boat for six hours without letting her sit down in the wind and the rain. She's an 86-year-old woman. Prince Philip is 91. Six hours with nowhere to sit. It was freezing that day. He got sick, didn't he, at the end of it? I think he faked it. I think he's got half of a Sorry, how many more days do I have to put up with this shit? Three more days. It hurts when I pee. I'm going to hospital. Then they had the Jubilee concert, clues in the name. It was a concert to celebrate the Jubilee for the Queen. We had it in her back garden. But the Queen does not want a rock concert in her garden. She's 86 years old. <laughs> does she really want it in her backyard, Jessie J? She's 86. <laughs> Kylie Minogue in her hot pants, are you kidding? Grace Jones? What on earth was that her plans? <laughs> The whole time. Slave. <laughs> to the rhythm. Slave. <laughs> to the rhythm. Can the queen enjoy this? Was she back at Buckingham Palace playing it? Slave. <laughs> to the rhythm. To the rhythm. Slave. Stop the clock. Start it again. To the rhythm. Look who's back from hospital. Slave. I was in rhythm, I watched on TV. That was a wonderful film. 
throw one on me. <laughs> Slay! <laughs> the corgis. <laughs> Look up with Prince Harry on Skype from Las Vegas. Slay. <laughs> Here comes Kate. Slay. <laughs> okay. She's rich, the Queen, though. She's done well for herself, let's be honest. I mean, there are technically people with more money than the Queen, but she's on money. Okay, I can't really argue with that kind of wealth. She's not going to have any money problems, she's on it. There's a picture of her on all money. I've always wondered, could she use it as ID? You know, when she's going through customs on an internal Ryanair flight. Not see some photo ID. Could she just flip a coin? Hello. All the notes as well, it doesn't matter what note it is, five pounds, ten pounds, twenty pounds, fifty pounds, it's always the same image of the Queen, smiling in the corner. Hello, <laughs> I've always thought they missed the trick. I always thought they should have more exciting images of the Queen, depending on how much money it is, you know? Fifty pound Queen, she should be there in all her glory. Robes flying, crown jewels, diamonds everywhere. And fifty pound Queen. <laughs> Check me out. Boom. <laughs> One pea queen, she used to have a dressing gown on, rollers in her head, <laughs> put a tumble in her hair, cigarette on the go. I'm one pea queen, wanna see the real me? Earn some fucking money, okay? <laughs> I actually met the queen, I met the queen, I got invited to like a reception at Buckingham Palace, I just went and I shook her hand, it was, it was fun, it was an honour. It was probably the most exciting post I've ever received, you know, when I got the invitation in the post. Because most days post is quite boring, you know, just bills and rubbish. But this day, something seems, seemed to be glowing in the pile. I was like, what on earth could this be? It was heavy when I picked up the envelope. Sort of had silk woven into the fabric. My name was written in fountain pen, calligraphy. The end just went on forever. <laughs> this is the most exciting post I've ever got. I turned it over, there was actually a seal on it, a red wax seal. I was like, oh, I'm going to Hogwarts. I was so excited. <laughs> Children, <laughs> daddy's a wizard. <laughs> Go to my house. <laughs> so I opened it up, you know, with my finger. That's what, that's what modern people like to do. We just rip it up and we just find a bit rip. Because <laughs> old people, they used to have little swords. I, I miss the swords. Why don't we get swords? Old people would have a little sword, they would do battle with their posts. Old people's desks are hilarious. Little mini swords, blotting paper, paperweights. How windy are their houses? Why do they need paperweights? So I opened it up, the envelope, which by the way I'm a big fan of envelopes, you know. Postcards I never understand. I don't really understand why people write postcards because you can know that everybody's going to read your postcard. It's like public viewing. It's a nonsense. You know for a fact every time you write a postcard, the postman is going to read your postcard. So I always leave something a little mischievous when I send one. Dear Dave, still having those sexual fantasies about the postman? <laughs> Who writes anything anymore? I don't write anything. I don't even know if I can write. I type everything on the computer. I don't think I can live without spell check. I'll tell you what's really bugging me at the moment is people who have the same name but is spelled completely differently. I'm so sorry for all of you people, and I know there are many in this room tonight. It's such an odd, unnecessary waste of your life. Like Sarah, like Sarah with an H, or Sarah without an H. Sarah without an H is pronounced like this. Sarah. And with an H, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> but Sarah has spent the whole of her life doing is Sarah with an H, with an H? That's with an H. Is that, sorry, is that with an H? No, there's no H. Sorry, there's an H. You put an H, there's no H, there's actually no H. What a waste of life. <laughs> like Stuart with a W is pronounced like this. Stuart. Without a W, 
Stuart. <laughs> what are we doing? It's not like it's... What's your name? Stuart. <laughs> Stuart. And you are? Stuart. <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> and this is my wife, Sarah. <sighs> oh! Stuart. And Sarah? <sighs> Stuart. This is Stuart. Come and meet the others. It's uh, Stephen and Stephen. Do say hello. <laughs> this is Stuart. Stuart. And Sarah? <gasps> Stephen and Stephen. Oh, if it's <laughs> Jeff and Geoff, join the party. <laughs> Jeff and Geoff. And your wife, Jim and Gil. Jeff, I forget who's with who. Jim is with Geoff and Jeff is with Jill. This is a Stuart. Stuart. Stephen. Stephen and Sarah. <sighs> this is the three Shawns. Do join the party. We've got Shawn, Seen, and Shawn. Come on in. Shawn, Seen, and Shawn. This is Stuart. Stuart. Stephen. Stephen. Jeff, Geoff, Jill, Gill, and Sarah. <sighs> what a waste of life. that has come with a little story. You poor things, suffering. What's her name? Hannah. With an, with an H? Yes. <laughs> Hannah with an H. Oh, at the end. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you'd been unnecessarily explaining this belief your name. It's like they're going, Michael, with an M. <laughs> Who else? What, what's your name? Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> Everyone's laughing because there's only one way to spell it. But let's see what your parents decided to do. W A I N. That's, that's, that's just a massive error. You need to change that. Why would you do that? Why? Why? <laughs> so I opened up the letter, right, you know. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's now yesterday's <laughs> post. <laughs> Dear Michael, the master... I'm reading the letter now. Dear Michael, the master of the household... That sounds very exciting. Who's this guy? The master of the household would like to invite you to Buckingham Palace to meet Her Majesty the Queen. RSVP, master of the household at buckinghampalace.com. Couldn't believe it. Invited to Buckingham Palace. So I emailed back almost immediately. Yes. Dear master of the household, I would love to meet the Queen. Thank you for your kind invitation. Then I signed it to Michael, master of my household. <laughs> I regretted it as soon as I sent it. Why am I trying to be funny with the master of Buckingham Palace? It's obviously quite a serious person. He's not going to email me back. LOL, can't wait to see you. That's not going to happen. <laughs> What's that going to He's going to wake up the Queen. Wake up, Her Majesty. The most hilarious email has just come through. <laughs> I love that Chinese comedian. He's such a... She's got a good fake smile, the Queen, doesn't she? A lot of fake smiling she has to do in her life. She's honourable. Because I can't do that. It's tough, isn't it? When someone says, smile, 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 it's hard to... When someone says, smile, 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 smile. It's always annoying about the digital cameras as well, because they take a photo of you, then they delete it in front of your face. It's really quite insulting. <laughs> Oh, no, that's terrible. Can we try again? No, we can't try again. I've only got one face. I'll be using this face for all the photos. Let's just take that one. The one that's really annoyed me, and this has literally annoyed me since I was like a toddler. So when people take a photo and they go, say cheese. And everyone goes, cheese. What, what, why are we behaving like that? That is not how people say cheese. This is how people say cheese. 
Cheese. <laughs> What's wrong with all of us? Not in the supermarket pushing the trolley. Excuse me, mate, you work here. I'm looking for the cheese. <laughs> I think it's all four for cheese. <laughs> you want or salt and vinegar or cheese and <laughs> onion? <laughs> Here's some advice. I don't even know if this is true. It's more of a tip. Um, my sister told me this. Apparently models who make a living out of looking good in photos, they don't say cheese. They say prune, prune, prune. Because it makes them pout. Prune. Mm. Try it. I know you're trying to. <laughs> Slightly awkward. Uh, obviously, I meant the women. It's a pouting thing. <laughs> Just <laughs> 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 yeah, models do that. They're very arrogant, aren't they, models? It's actually one of those runway things. The other day, the, the way they walk. It's the most obnoxious walk I think I've ever seen anyone do. And they sort of thrust. Check me out. Yeah. <laughs> None of us would ever have the arrogance to walk like that in public. That's not actually strictly true. We all walk like that. When we get a strike in 10 pin bowling, it's one of the oddest moments in life. <laughs> Doesn't matter who you are, you'd be the hardest bloke on earth as you select the ball, walk down the lane in your normal walk, throw it down, do that leg thing for no reason at all. <laughs> if they all fall down, you're suddenly the campus man on earth. Well, who's the king of bowling? Right? Turns out he's me. Boom! Complete personality shift. And you all strike. I wouldn't have remembered that prune thing if it wasn't for my wife. She actually remembered it. She banked it in her mind to use it. And it was a little bit of a disaster. It was one of these like red carpet things and I have all these photographers. She's got a new dress on and everything. She decided to bring out the prune, but got it completely wrong. She said, plum, plum is a different fruit. <laughs> but it would be, and it ruined her face. It's not like she was smelling something awful. She was standing there going, plum, <laughs> plum. It's like a whole bank of photographers. I heard, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm doing that muggle thing, plum. It's like, no. It's prune! Now I'm happy. There's actually a photo online of me going prune! <laughs> oh, <it was> plum. <laughs> That's not the worst. One, once I went to like this, it was like the BAFTAs or something, it was a big awards thing, and I got all dressed up, and I wore my glasses because I thought it looked cool, and my wife approved it. She's like, yes, they're very cool in your glasses. I'm like, I'll wear these. She got a beautiful new dress. You we went down red carpet, flash bulbs everywhere, signing autographs, famous people. And then you sort of pose for like official photo. Here we are, we've arrived. And I went online the next day to see the photo they used. And I've got to tell you, when I saw it, I nearly, I nearly threw up. I was as shocked as you're about to be when I saw this photo of me. I looked really angry. I was standing there like this, going like that. <laughs> and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, oh my God. Someone's obviously photoshopped this. They doctored it. It was all over the internet. I never did that. Why would I do that? I'm not insane. Who would go to the BAFTAs and just go fuck off to all the press? <laughs> also, I don't do that. That's not something I... I'm not a finger flicker, you know? You can probably say this. It's not something that comes particularly natural to me. I don't even know how people do it. Do you start early and then bring it into play? <laughs> Sort of reveal it? Yes! I don't like you. <laughs> people do it to me, rude people, in the car. I think it reflects badly on my driving. <laughs> Sometimes they drive past me and just leave their finger out the window. <laughs> as long as you can see me, fuck off. <laughs> so I phoned up my publicist. I said, look, somebody hates me. They've doctored these photos. It's all over the internet. I was livid. I wanted to take legal action. So we demanded to see all the original photos to prove that this has happened to me. And very unexpectedly, it turned out to be my fault. Didn't see it coming. I was pushing my glasses up. Seriously. <laughs> what kind of an idiot? After the photos did look quite funny, this piece of saying.
got my fixed me. Because, <laughs> you know, it would have been a big night. We don't go out very often. But when we do, you know, it's such a, it's a grand occasion, especially for her. I mean, I, I marvel at all of you women and what you go through on a big night out, planning in advance, booking blow dries. She goes off for a blow dry. She comes back completely unrecognizable. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> yeah. Get the nails done. The tanning, lots of tanning going on. Not all of you are very good at it. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> but you have to tan your entire body. That's an essential part of trying to convince people you've been abroad. Some people sort of leave their feet. You need to tan all the way over the feet. And people go up to them going, oh, you look well. You've been away somewhere nice? In your socks? <laughs> but the spray tan is good. That actually works quite well. My wife's had some spray tans. It's, it's a very odd process, though. They spray her like a very dark mahogany. A, a colour that no human being has ever been, right? And then she has to wait for like 24 hours. And then you wash off the mahogany. And then she's a beautiful golden brown colour. But this 24-hour period, well, like, it's difficult. It's difficult for the whole family. Because she stinks as well. She's a little stinking, mahogany, blow-dried woman walking around. The children don't know who it is. That is who that stinky, dark lady guy. <laughs> That's your mother. That not mummy. I don't like that lady. She smells. Dark lady smells. We're hoping their mummy, I don't like her. Please, I don't want her reading a story. <laughs> also, it's just terrible because it comes off. It like, she'll stain, she'll touch soft furnishings and clothing and literally leave brown stains on them. And it, it's led to literally the most distressing mornings of my entire life. You know when you wake up in the morning and you haven't yet adjusted to the day? So I look over. She shut the bed. <laughs> if I'm honest, that's probably not the first thing I think. The first thing I do is confirm it's not me. Okay. <laughs> it's not it's on not my side. Darling, so wake up. Look at me. I'm just going to come straight out with this because it's bad. Okay? You're very sick. You're a very sick woman. I'm so sorry. We can't go out tonight. You've done a shit in your sleep. It's everywhere. It's even under your face. I'm not even sure that how that's happened. The children are coming in. Mahogany, mahogany, put on the bed. Just get out, get out and close the door. But of course, then she washes it off, and she's a beautiful golden brown, you know, to go with the blow dry pow, and the nails. Yeah. That's before she's even got dressed yet. Women getting dressed, it's an extraordinary procedure. Everything, she needs privacy. Lots of privacy. I'm getting rigid now. Just leave me alone. But of course, men never want to leave women alone when they're getting dressed. When there's some kind of nakedness involved, we will always be lingering, lurking. It's the privilege of every husband and boyfriend. <laughs> I'm always lurking, you know, I'm always getting the... Mm. <laughs> You've been lying in bed looking at the laptop, but just leaning over. <laughs> Can you just piss off? I'm getting dressed. I'm not looking, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just... What pants are you wearing? Just piss <laughs> off! <laughs> Because it's fun. It's fun to watch a girl getting dressed. Not all of it. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. There are aspects of women getting dressed that have decidedly mixed results. <laughs> Tights, for example, is a very 50-50 affair. The first half is quite, I would say, almost erotic. A very enjoyable spectator sport. The lower leg. Let's focus on the lower leg for now. Sort of pointed toe. Delicately scrunch up the tight, glide it neatly over the lower leg. Lovely. Glide it over the other one. Marvellous. But once the tights reach the halfway point, 
This is where I suggest you leave the room, okay? Because some shit goes on after that. Sometimes you just talk at a crotch for like half an hour. And just when you think it's over, she carries on. Jesus, what are we doing up here now? She's just walking around like a baby taking their first steps. Sometimes she looks in the mirror and goes, no, these aren't right. Don't do it again! Mixed results. Like high heels as well. Amazing when stationary. Sometimes you just stand there. What do you think of these new shoes, my car? They're nice, aren't they? Oh my god. Those shoes are incredible. Yeah, I just bought them. They're really nice. I really like them. I oh, seriously look incredible in those shoes. I can't believe you married me. You're gorgeous. Come to me. Come to your husband. You know what? I'll come to you. Let's not spoil this. Jesus Christ. Mixed results. That's before we even watch the face. Incredible. Women don't have to use the face they've been given. I'm so envious of that. You sit and look in the mirror and go, well, no one's going to be meeting this. This person will be using these products to create a completely new identity. Men don't have that luxury. There's nothing more depressing than a man looking in the mirror before he's going out at night. Well, that's it. <laughs> ah! I'm ready. Come on, darling. Where are we going? That's all we do, basically. Hair management. That's all men can really... That's our focus. We just hope hair stays on our head. We hope it doesn't start popping out of our nose and our ears. Human beings have a very odd relationship with hair. Some hair we like on our body, others we find disgusting. I think the oddest relationship with any hair on the human body, in my opinion, has to be the eyelash. I just don't understand eyelashes. Why have we decided that eyelashes are magic? They can change the future. It's one of the most peculiar scenarios when somebody goes, shh, don't move. Don't move your face. Stay still. What? What is it? What's on it? What's on it? Shh. Just stay completely still. Easy. Careful. Eyelash. Oh. Thank you. Well, go on then. Make your wish. <laughs> Sometimes we actually think about it. Um, um, what do I need? Um, okay, okay. <sighs> Don't tell me. I won't. Thank you. Thank you. What on earth is that all about? decided that certain hair that falls off your body can change destiny. And why is it that hair anyway? It could be any hair. You could be standing at the urinals going, excuse me, mate, don't move. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you can stand. stand still. Easy. Easy. Stand completely still. Pube. Oh, cheers, man. Yeah. Well, go on then. Make a wish. Uh, uh, <sighs> Try again. Look at this one who's off in the blast. Stay there, mate. I'm making a point. It's illogical. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing men can do. There's nothing I can do. And it, it lends itself to laziness. I, I can't speak for other men, but I've become so incredibly lazy. You know, I'm in a long-term relationship now. I've been with my wife for a long time. 
I sort of do what I can get away with. The minimum, I do the minimum. And I thought I was getting away with it. Until the other day, she had a word. It was quite frightening. It would obviously be like a build-up. I, li- I didn't see it coming. She just came up to me, Michael, Michael. Because her eyes look different. No, no, no. <laughs> Have a word, please. Um, okay, what is it? Okay. She said, Michael, if you open one more milk, when there's already a milk open, <laughs> so help me God, I'm going to divorce you. Really? I, with this close to the edge over milk? Yes, it's just a build-up. You just don't listen to me. I've asked you so many times. It's really winding me up. Why don't you do what I ask you? I'm sorry. I just, I just consider there's an amount of milk in the house, and you know that that sort of that level goes down as a whole. No, it doesn't go down as a whole. Just do as I ask you. All right? Take the bottle that's already open. It really upsets me. Okay? Will you just to me? Yes, of course. I will. All right. Is there anything else? I should never have said that. Why did I leave it? <laughs> Now that you ask, that I don't un- that I don't understand, Michael. I don't understand about you. Well, what is it? Well, why? Why do you? Sometimes you do help. Sometimes you put your your dirty laundry in the basket, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you. But why occasionally to just leave it near the basket? <laughs> to help me. Why would you sometimes not help me and put it near the basket? I just don't understand that. Why is that, Michael? Because I'm throwing it in. <laughs> sometimes I miss. <laughs> well, then I go back and pick it up. I do. I often go back and pick it up. Then I try again. <laughs> I'll do that for half an hour. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. Well, you better not, because it's really pissing me off. There's a few more things as well. Do you know that sometimes when you finish a packet of biscuits, you put the empty packet back in the cupboard? (laughs) Why on earth would you do that? I didn't think you knew that was me. (laughs) Who else is it going to be? And will you please, and Michael, I've literally, I know that I, for a fact, asked you this a hundred thousand times since we've been together. Please, will you put your plate in the dishwasher, not next to it, because next to it, I know you think you're helping, but you're not helping, because it gets cleaned when it's in it, not next to it. Do you understand me? <laughs> Sorry, darling, I do always help. Every time I finish my food, I always drop it off in the, in the zone of the dishwasher. <laughs> This is helping me. You might as well put it in the fucking garden. It doesn't get clean. And it doesn't get clean next to the dishwasher. It gets clean in the dishwasher. Do you understand me? Why can't you understand that concept? When I unload the shopping, do I unload it next to the fridge, hoping someone's going to finish the job for me? No. When I cook the Sunday lunch, do I put the chicken next to the oven? No, I put it in the oven. Do we children at the school every day? Do we sit on the pavement next to the car? No, we can take the car! <laughs> the only thing you clean in this house on a regular basis is your internet history, and it's disgusting. <laughs> Thirteen years we've been together. You know, we're, I think we're deliriously happy. And there are people in here in long-term relationships. There are people in new relationships. There are people not in relationships. I suppose the question I'm asking is, how do you know you're in a long-term relationship? How do you know you can start terming your relationship as long-term? Well, I think if you're interested, I've actually pinpointed the exact moment when a relationship goes long-term. I think it's when before sex. You no longer take each other's clothes off, but you take your own clothes off independently. (laughs) 
because you realise it's more practical and less time consuming. Because <laughs> in a new relationship, obviously you're filled with romance and passion, lots of fiddling with bra straps and belts and ripping. And then, one night, you don't even discuss it, you'll just find yourself independently lying adjacent to one another and slowly taking your clothes off. Obviously, once you've established sex is on, that's normally just a sort of hopeful look towards her. Or she'll do something sensationally erotic, like mute the television. <gasps> you are watching it. There can only be one thing. Yay! <laughs> then you just slowly take your clothes off. She'll be there doing all her business. You know. Socks off, obviously, if it's a special occasion. <laughs> Confirm you're both entirely naked. Right. Let's begin. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, the relationship has begun. And there's no going back. And it's the same for afterwards as well. You know, in a new relationship after sex, you were made naked for some period of time. In your new relationship, everything's so new. But the cover's off you. Look at me. Naked. I'm so comfortable to be naked with you. She was walking around completely naked. Look at me, completely naked in my new relationship with you. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's go downstairs, Nikki. Nikki, the food with my chili balls in my new relationship. <laughs> in a long-term relationship, literally the microsecond that it ends, you reassemble. Everything goes back to my house. The book comes back out. The glasses are back on. The laptop is reopened. The television is unmuted. It's like a magic trick. I don't know how couples do it. Somebody could come into a room, survey the scene, walk out for three, maybe three and a half minutes, walk back in. <laughs> the same scene would greet them. How is that even possible? But you have to be careful. You have to be careful in a long-term relationship. You have to respect women because they're so different. Because you can take them for granted. And often, you know, she'll have a word. She'll say, you know, Michael. You've got to be a bit more romantic with me, you know? We've been together a long time now. You've got to make a bit of an effort sometimes. Be a bit more romantic, because I'm a woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> I've been doing some reading as well recently. I've read three books. <laughs> and I'm a woman. And I need to be seduced. This is very difficult for men to understand. Because men don't need to be seduced. We can seduce ourselves when we're not even conscious. <laughs> Often we just wake up in the morning and just, oh. <laughs> I appear to have fully seduced myself during the night. <laughs> but, darling, I'm up for it if you're up for it. I'm asleep. What are you talking about? Piss off. Oh, you well, shut the bed anyway. Let's leave it. <laughs> Spontaneity. That's big as well. Women love spontaneity. I just don't think men really know what it means. <laughs> you know, just got to be more, a bit more spontaneous, you know. Just be spontaneous though, once in a while. Surprise me with something. Be spontaneous. Men don't really know what that means. We think it means do something when she least expects it. That's what we really come up with. We're just suddenly bending down, loading the dishwasher. This is a capture in the corner of my eye. Oh, yeah, hello. I'm shagging. What are you doing? I'm busy. I'm being spontaneous. No, piss off. Sorry, what's wrong with you? I don't need to be spontaneous. I was, I was reading the paper and I tried to have sex with you. It was a completely spontaneous. It's the definition of spontaneous. I can't win. Once I actually knocked her in by accident. Sorry, darling, I was trying to be spontaneous. Spontaneously nearly took my eye out, you idiots! Such a dickhead! Oh my god, I've got pasta in my hair! Please, on my forehead! Such a twat! I wouldn't be here if he 
you put your plate in the fucking dishwasher and not next to it? <laughs> so who, um, who put their tickets online? Oh, we have applause. Online people. Online us. Good. Yes, online booking. It's, it's easy-ish, isn't it? It's odd. I find online booking quite, quite difficult. There are aspects of it I, I just don't understand. What is that phrase that you have to repeat? This is like a challenge you have to go through before you even got the ticket. Some kind of literacy test. It was sort of like a collection of letters that are all sort of wiggly and hiding behind each other. Wisdom for not gonna hurt. 24. Okay. You just have to copy it. Wisdom for not gonna hurt. 24. You press send it and it goes, no. Why? <laughs> Try these, these ones. Why am I doing this challenge? Sometimes I can get stuck on that bit for about half an hour. I just want to take it! get through the, the registering. I, don't, you just, I just hate registering for things online. It just winds me up. I don't want to join all these companies. I just want to, I just want to get the product. I don't want to. I hate it when I look at a booking form and it's all empty. I was filling in and put your name in, put your address in. Sometimes when you click country of your address, every country in the world comes up. Look at an unbelievable number of countries just to scroll through and also what comes with living in this country we don't actually know where we live there are too many options you have to look for all of them england you hope for england because it's nearest to here no not england no, no, no. all the great britain no not great britain okay all the way to the united kingdom you have like cramp from getting to the united kingdom why are all these countries there i don't understand it I was booking tickets the other day to see the View Cinema on the Finchley Road, okay? To see the Avengers or something. Who is coming from Uzbekistan? Why? <laughs> is it there? Surely the only country that should be on the list is the country you're in. It's a local <laughs> cinema. Angola is the first one on the list. Who's in Angola going, Today I would like to go to the cinema in North London. <laughs> of my local multiplex. <laughs> this is like a 2.30 showing the same day. How would anyone get there from Angola? <laughs> we will charter a fighter jet and we will travel as a family to view cinema on Finchley Road. It sounds exotic. I will see the Avengers there and then we will fly back immediately. <laughs> I'm only decipher this phrase. Is that a B or a 13? Why am I doing this challenge? Then you put your email address in and you have to confirm your email address. This winds me up. Why do I have to confirm my own email address? I can confirm it the first time. It's my email address. Why are you testing me on my own email address? You haven't asked me to confirm anything else. It's right. I'm not an idiot. I know my email address. It's always been my email address because they're desperate, aren't they? They're desperate to get your email address so they can put you on their mailing list and harass you. So they're going to harass you with little updates and sales promotions for the rest of your life and you don't want to be part of that. And they know that you don't want to be part of that. So they make it very difficult for you to know whether you're supposed to tick or not tick the box, which will basically tell them to leave you alone. It'll say something like, if you do not want to not, not, not receive endless emails from us for the rest of your living life and the lives of your children, please remember to forget to remember to uncheck, check the non-check, uncheck, non-check. Check, check, non-check, tick box. <laughs> I have no idea. It's a 50-50. It's just taken me an hour and a half to guess Yangu 38. Now I've got a 50-50. Terms sure. and conditions you just agreed to. I mean, who's got time? Who's got time? Seriously. To do a week's legal reading. I'm just trying to buy a toaster from Argos. I don't think we need to get the lawyers involved in this early stage. I'm sure everything's fine. 
I'm buying an album from iTunes. I'm sure legally there's going to be no difficulties. What is all that? You just tick it. They don't let you go to the next page anyway, unless you're just going, yes, I'm sure that's fine. You have to tick it anyway. We don't even know what we're agreeing to. I think a small part of us is panicking slightly. But in sort of 30 years, people from iTunes are going to just show up at our houses. We own this house. Get out. <laughs> Signed it several years ago when you bought a single <laughs> passwords. I mean, Jesus Christ, I remember the good old days. Do you remember? I, I look back nostalgically when I had one password for everything. We all had our first password. Do you remember your first password? But then it starts to get complicated. We have to have a number. You know, that started to come into play. Can we have a number, please, in your password? A number? I don't have a number in my password. Well, you'll need a number in your password. So we all came up with the same solution to this little dilemma. You can have the number one at the end of my normal password. <laughs> now they can be quite rude, can't they? You suggest a password, it goes weak. Fuck off, those are my children's names. <laughs> are you calling weak? Who are you to judge me, Amazon? Then you forget your password, and let's be honest, I forget passwords all the time. Every time I log back onto something, you, you try to rejoin, and then it's like you already joined several years ago. Do you remember your user my email password? That email's already on our system. I don't remember doing that. That was years ago. It's not that important to me. Well, then you'll have to answer these security questions. I don't even know the answers to my own security questions. <laughs> Where, do I, where was I born? Did I put the hospital? Did I put the, the town? Did I put the... I don't know where I was. How many dogs? I've got lots of dogs. Which dog did I put in? I don't know. Mum, can you throw me back with your maiden name? I can't get it wrong. This is time. Booking fees. That's a pisser, isn't it? Booking fees? You have to agree to the booking fee? I have just spent an hour and a half doing my own booking. Who the fuck am I paying the booking fee to? <laughs> we need to pay the booking fee. They're stealing from us. <laughs> I'm doing the booking. You shrug off my children's names and then you can take money for no reason. But of course you agree to that because you're already in. You're already an hour in. Of course, so whatever, whatever money you need at this point, I will agree to. You put your credit card details in, the last three numbers on the signature strip, and you fill it all out, and you're quite proud of yourself. Look at that. I've done it. And you click next with confidence. Then everything comes back in red. You thought this up, you left that out. What you can buy us a this line. You half expect to see me at the bottom, pathetic. Sometimes you're doing it, I don't know if this happens to you, and you get timed out. Who am I racing? Sorry, I'm too late. Do you know what? <laughs> Who selected their seat online? Oh. I didn't even know this was possible. You see the whole plan. It's like, yeah, let's go there, let's go there. I think in the future we'll be able to see where other people are sitting, get some information, hover over other seats. Oh, sort of like some. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this person has big hair, double them smelly person hair, let's not feel it over Hot 19 year olds. Can I sit there, darling? Can you sit over there? <laughs> you seem to be over there, I seem to be over here. <laughs> I did this booking the seats for the first time the other day. I, I've never gone to the cinema with so much confidence of where I was sitting in my entire life. I knew the whole plan. I was there with the popcorn and my wife and everything. But that's not in order of, of preference. <laughs> <laughs> and the, but there was somebody in my seat. I was so, it was really disappointing, considering I put it online. I was so confident that wasn't my seat, but then somebody was in it. But I didn't want to wade in. You never want to just wade in to strangers, because you don't really want to talk to strangers ever. So you have to, I had to check. I made sure it was G, you see G. But you can't check the numbers, because when you sit on the cinema seat, the number tends to be on the top of the seat, so it's sort of between people's legs. How are you supposed to check that? You can't go along the line, excuse me, is that, oh, two, three, some guy in a kilt. Is that 600? Oh, no, six. Do 
So I come on, tell them, tell them it's your seat. So I was like, oh yeah, it's my seat, it's my seat. Because I've got my tickets. I booked it online, I selected this. And he was like, no, it's not in my seat. And he got his tickets out. We had the same seat, so we, we had to look our face off. But I, I was quite angry and rude to him because I knew that I was right because I'd actually selected it online. But during the argument, I realized that I had the wrong date on my ticket. It was <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm right, all right? I'll go and sort this out. I'll be back in 24 hours. <laughs> it's like I make a journey home with the popcorn. You're an idiot, Michael. <laughs> yeah, you can select your seats. But some seats, some seats, restricted view seating. I have never understood restricted view seating. I called up the other day to go to the theatre or something, and they, they, they were like, we, don't, we only have a restricted view available. They've only got restricted view. We're not, well, that, thanks, but no thanks. I think I'd like to see the whole stage <laughs> when I'm going to the theatre. I don't even think you should be selling tickets with a restricted view. She went, oh, no, you know, you'd be surprised. Some people actually prefer it. <laughs> prefer it. <laughs> prefer to be behind a pillar. With an obscured view. It's like, yeah, because it's cheaper. What kind of people are these? Oh, I went to the theatre last night. I saw The Lion, the Witch. I never saw The Wardrobe. I got a cracking deal on my ticket. I saw Snow White and I counted four dwarves for it. It said, it ain't bad for a tenner. I don't know if booking is better online. But some technology, let's be honest, is incredible. Kindles. They're very good. You got a Kindle? Amazing. You can read books now on like an electronic device. You have thousands of books on one thing. Amazing. Books are finished. Unfortunately, we've loved books. But books are over because this is going to take over. It's so much easier. And I think future generations are going to look back at us and sort of laugh at us the way we've been behaving with books for centuries. Reading books, finishing books, and then decorating our homes with the book. <laughs> I've enjoyed this book immensely. I want to look at it now, till death. I want all the books I've read staring at me in the face. I'll never touch them again, but I want to know that I have the ability to read. People can come round. Have you seen all the reading I've managed to achieve in my life? And I've enjoyed ready meals. I don't staple the packaging to the wall. Spinach and ricotta cannelloni, a classic. Join me in the moussaka section. The phone, obviously, I couldn't live without the phone. I mean, my mobile phone. It's my whole life. I'm checking, I check it all the time. I think I'm being a bit mad. I check it in the morning before I even open my eyes. I have the phone in front of my face. What has happened while I've been sleeping? But it makes you paranoid, doesn't it? Phones make you paranoid. I hate it when people don't text me back. It really winds me up. I did that the other week with a couple. We had a nice time. My wife and I went to dinner. We, we, we laughed, we joked, we split the bill. You know, I think we hugged at the end. I sent a text in the car, classic text. Lovely to see you. We should do this again sometime. Send. Whoosh. I expected within moments to get a doo -doo -doo along the same lines. Lovely to see you too. I got nothing. Nothing. This has literally pissed me off. <laughs> Weeks. It's, it's, it's just rude. Because he's obviously got my text and just taken it. You know, it is lovely to see me. And carried on with his own life. <laughs> It's human interaction, it's courtesy. It's the equivalent of me getting up, standing in his face and going, I'm on a lovely night, we should do this again sometime. And then just going... <laughs> we went out the other night, my wife and I. Went to like a fundraiser dinner, and they had everyone sitting at tables and eating and stuff, and, and so it was quite a grand affair. There was an auction, and this guy came up before the auction. He said, we're about to have an auction, but before we do, if anyone would just like to donate a thousand pounds to the charity, please stand up and make yourself known. You could feel the tension around the room. Is that really a grand just to stand up? But then people started standing up, sort of generous, rich men would just sort of stand up. Yes, I will give you a thousand pounds, and people would applaud Lex Spartacus. Yes. The funniest thing I saw was this waiter right to the back just went.
Yes, the phones make you paranoid. It's like that. You ever get that phone call when somebody calls you, you completely blank, so they've like sat on their phone and you just hear noises from their life. And you pick it up, you just hear someone sort of walking along. I don't know. 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 And you know immediately what's happened. They phoned you by accident. They've sat on the phone. This is the sound of the world from their pocket. You should hang up the phone and carry on with your own life. But I can't. <laughs> I listen for as long as is possible. And then I start convincing myself they're going to slag me off while they're at a crossword with them. Where am I going to go? <laughs> that Macintosh's a prick. I knew it! <laughs> Bastard! I was right to listen for one hour, 32 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> but the world is changing, you see. The world is nothing about nothing to do with us anymore. It's all about the children. It's just changing so quickly, moving so fast. Technology. A good example of this was I was in the car the other day with my children. You know when, they, you know when kids are going, are we nearly there yet? When are we there, to say? When are we going to be there? Are we nearly there yet? Because of sat now from the other day, my four-year-old said, Daddy, have we reached our destination? That's <laughs> <laughs> I've got two children, Lucas and Oscar, Lucas with a C. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I gave them their names because I like their names. They're lovely names. But I didn't realise what it was going to be like. You actually basically, because they're seven and four now, and they don't do a thing I tell them to. I shout the names they gave them. All day now, I just shout the names that I lovingly selected for them. Lucas! Put that down. Don't touch that. Oscar! Don't hit your brother. Lucas! Where's your other shoe? Oscar! Look at me when I'm talking to you. Lucas! Don't you dare talk to your mother like that. That's my life. If I had have known what it was going to be like, I would have named them Hay and Oi. Would have been so much easier. <laughs> hey, don't touch that. that. Oi! Don't hit your brother. <laughs> they like Where's Wally? I don't know why. It's very boring. If you're not familiar with Wally, Wally's basically a, a little person in a stripy top, and you have to find him in a crowded scene full of other people in stripy tops, but there's only one Wally. It sounds quite boring, but my kids love looking. For him. And it's great for my wife and I, because we can just open the book and go, you look for Wally. Well, we go and look for a life we left behind before we had you two. <laughs> and we just go, Fally! we just turn the page, good, find another one, come on. <laughs> but I think I have done something which I feel amazingly guilty about, and I don't want you to judge me by this, but I think it just highlights, you know, how stressful and tired you can become as parents. I coloured Wally in. Is that bad? <laughs> There's no Wally. They've been looking, looking for 11 days. <laughs> My wife and I went to Dennis last weekend. We needed the break. But they're very clever little children. It's amazing how absorbent of information they are. And they, because they need to learn everything. That's what children have to learn everything in the world. But they, they learn like useless information as well, like adverts. They, they, we, don't, we know that adverts are rubbish, propaganda, just nonsense. But they think it's like factual information. The other day, my seven year old Lucas came up to me and said, Daddy? It's like, yes, darling? He said, Have you been accidentally missed old PPI? <laughs> what are you talking about? You could be entitled to a refund of up to three thousand pounds. Come on, have it! Shut up! <laughs> Recently, my Aussie, my four-year-old, slipped on the kitchen floor. I went over to see if he was okay. Obviously, he threatened to phone injury lawyers for you. <laughs> Which I think is entitled to one hundred percent of the compensation. I try, you know, we all try as parents. You try to look after, you try to entertain them. I mean, that's the hardest thing. You know what it is? If you live in London, I took them the other day to the park, took them to the monkey bars. Remember the monkey bars? Sort of series of parallel bars, sort of swing. I could never do it when I was a kid. I can do it now. <laughs> I just walk across. Hello. <laughs> You're my daddy. It's a say. Anyway. But my son, he can't do it. Bless him. He wants to do it so badly. He's got so much determination. 
you know, but he sort of holds, sort of swings to one and then he sort of loses his grip and then he falls, you know, into, into the dirt. But that's part of life, isn't it? Get up, try again. Try and try again. At first you don't succeed. And he's determined. And he wants to do it and I love that about him. But the other day we were in the park and this is also part of life and he'd fallen off and he was in the dirt. And then this girl, who must have been, I don't know, three or two years old, literally just swung across effortlessly. Yeah. She went backwards. Yeah! And was just in the dirt, looking up, going, oh, that's a bit depressing. I can't do that. But that's just part of life. Sometimes people can do things you can't. But what you would like to not be part of life was the arrogant mother of this girl, who just sort of leaned in and went, she's really mastered the monkey bars. Could have done without her. I just turned to her and went, I really well, monkey qualities aren't something I look for in my child. <laughs> I'm looking for a doctor or a lawyer. Good luck with your monkey baby. Come on, darling, let's go. <laughs> Do you live here in the trees with monkey baby? We're going home. Uh, I'm playing a great game with my children at the moment, a game that I'm immensely proud of because they're loving it and I invented it. I'm the inventor of this game. It's called Pants Down, You're the Loser. Now, <laughs> the rules of the game are much like the title suggests. I basically chase my children around the house and if I manage to pull their pants down, they are declared the loser of the game. But the real beauty in the playing of this game is that we don't plan on it. It's not like I say, hey, this Sunday, who's up for a game of pants down, kids? Before dinner, should we squeeze in some pants down? None of that shit. Anytime, day or night, I'll just go, pants down! You're the loser! They go nuts. They do this run where they don't know which way to go. sort of cross their ass away from me. No! <laughs> I literally tried to catch them off guard. You know, we'll sit down for dinner at the end of the day. My wife will be like, have you had a good day, children? I'll just go, pants down! The food goes everywhere. No! They're still there, they're cutlery. No, no, no! No, no! No! I did it once in the middle of the night. My wife nearly killed me, but it was worth it. I got into I was like, pants down! They're up in their pajamas in the dark. Daddy, where are you? Daddy! I think they collided with each other in the corridor. I did it the other night when they are in the bath. They had no idea what I was talking about. You can have something up your sleeve, you know? I'll be walking up the stairs. I'll just go behind them, pats down. <laughs> Please don't think, and this is very important to me, that I play this game to the best of my ability. I never actually pull their pants down, it's just the threat of it. It's not like I go, pats down! <laughs> game over. Naked losers. <laughs> Don't even look for Wally. You're embarrassing yourselves. <laughs> Another great way to entertain children is uh, play dates. You know, get a friend right from school. Go on, your friends here. Go on, your friends here. Go and play. Go on, you two. Go and play. The other day, I had a friend over, Josh. Really sweet. Seven-year-old, yeah, came into my office and actually introduced himself. How polite is that? Shook my hand. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Josh. Well, you're a very polite young man. Nice to meet you, too. You can't help but look at your own child. Why don't you do this? <laughs> then I was like, go on, you two. Go and play. Then my son went, Daddy? Yes, darling? Can we put pants down? Absolutely no way. Don't say that again. Just go and play. Shh. Then the kid went, 
Please, sir, try and pull my pants down. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I should have told you this is not your fault. This is my fault. This is not a game that we can play with other people, okay? Do you understand? <laughs> It's a private game that me and you play at home. I thought I'm making this worse. <laughs> so I realised I had to change the subject. I'm like, you know what? Let's play it. Hmm? It is basically pants down without the pants down scenario. <laughs> so we played it. We played catch. I basically chased him around the house for about an hour. We had a lot of fun. It was completely forgotten. And we had dinner. Then his dad came to pick him up, quite a serious, quite an angry-looking man, sort of an angry face. So. Hello, it's Josh here. I'm like, oh. Josh, I think your dad's here. Or oh, you're under arrest. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> you you right, Josh, you've been a good boy, yeah? He's like, oh yes, daddy, we've had so much fun. We were going to play this game where Lucas's daddy tries to pull my pants down. <laughs> But instead, I just ran around the house while he tried to touch me. That's what I said! I had that moment in my actual life! I can explain! You better explain! But the key to parenting, and you'll know this if you're a parent, or you can remember being a child. Basically, don't lose your children, they're little. They try to escape and they don't know the dangers of the world. So I will repeat myself all day, every day. Stay close to me, stay where I can see you, hold my hand, don't run off. Sometimes you lose them, sometimes they go from here to here, and you literally nearly have a heart attack. don't understand. Hide and seek. Who invented hide and seek? This is the stupidest game imaginable. It's a game that revolves around losing your children. Why would you ever want to lose your children? It's dangerous. There's dangers out there. I always cheat, okay? It's a big facade when I play hide and seek. I'm not going to let my children hide even in my own house. I mean, there's danger. They could hide in the tumble dryer. They could dry themselves to death. I'm like, like an idiot. Lie on the table. No, they're in the tumble dryer. I'm not in that. They can just leave home, just get the passports. I'm gonna win this game! Taxi! Taxi! No! I'm seeing that. So I cheat, and I was there exactly where they are. Seven, eight, nine. I see where they go, they go behind the curtains. I see the little feet sticking out the bottom. They're safe. They're behind the curtains. I'll fake the whole thing. Are you under the table? No. I know where they are. They're behind the curtains. They're in the cupboard? No. They're behind the curtains. I'm thinking the whole thing. Are you in my wallet? No. You can hear them giggling. <laughs> They're behind the curtains. And sooner or later, we go, are you behind the curtains? Yay! Whose turn is it? They come running out. The other day we played this, I, I had no idea how they did it. They outwitted me. <laughs> and then I was like, are you under the table? No. Are you behind the curtains? My wife and I were beside ourselves, frantic. After 20 minutes, she seriously suggested to me that we phoned the police. This is how bad it was. <laughs> this has been one of the most embarrassing recorded telephone conversations <laughs> in history. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is that the police? Hello, I'd like to report two missing children, please. Please, can you help me? Just calm down, sir. Where did you last see them? <sighs> I was on the landing, I counted to ten. <laughs> and then they just disappeared. Please, it doesn't matter. They are. We play hide and seek. So what? But that's not the point. The point is, I don't know. I've lost them. You've got to send someone. I love my children so much. And why are they missing? I think they've won. Of course they've fucking won. You are not listening to me. <laughs> I tried my best. They tried to be a good dad, but I don't know. I don't have the answers. They've got a lot of questions, don't they, children? I 
just refer them to Google. Why the sun like that? Why the moon? Why the days? Why is it called Tuesday? Google it. <laughs> There's a question the other day I could ask me. Well, how many days in the month? I was like, I know that one. I actually know that one. Because of the song. If it wasn't for the song, I don't know how I would ever know how many days are in any particular month. I don't know how people live their lives, but I have to sing the days of the month song to myself every single month just to get to the next month. 30 days of September, April, June. And never always, obviously, you stop at the month you're in. You don't sing the whole song. If it's September, you just go, 30 days of September. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a helpful song. It's probably got the worst last line of any song ever written. They couldn't seem to accommodate February into the rhyming structure. It's, like, it's got a caveat at the end of it. It's almost like someone's interrupted the performance. 30 days in September, April, June and November. All the rest have 31. Except for February. Sometimes has 28, sometimes has 29, depending on whether it's a leap year, okay? <laughs> I'll have a caveat at the end of the song. All you need is love. You've got to consider food and shelter. There's all the things that's love. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? But I, I hope I'm a good father. I mean, I am falling apart. I've had a very... This isn't, this isn't all how I wanted to be on my DVD, okay? I, I, I was going to get fit, but it just hasn't... It hasn't quite panned out, has it? The side view is a little disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, right. I'm just about in. <laughs> I will lose weight. I've invented a, a way to lose weight. It, it's my invention. Please don't steal this, because I, I actually have invented this. Um, it's going to solve the obesity problems of the world. Put a mirror in the fridge. I know. Best, the easy, simple ones are the best. So people just go, oh, I'm really <gasps> fat. <laughs> but the truth is, I haven't been able to get fixed. I've had a lot of injuries. I've, had, I've hurt myself a lot this year. Don't feel sorry for me. I tore my calf. I've had an operation on my knee. I dislocated my shoulder last year. I actually saw the same guy for my um, knee and my shoulder. I didn't expect to, especially. He's a very good doctor. I can recommend him. He helped my shoulder. Then I went to the hospital with my bad knee. And I opened the door. It's the same guy sitting behind the desk. So I went, Hello. So, oh, I know you. I know you. I said, yes. How's your shoulder? It's good. Oh, really good. Thank you. Oh, you really hate that. It's really, it feels fine. But I, so I've, I'm here for my knee, I've hurt my knee. I'm like, have I gone to the wrong room? He went, no, no, I do shoulders and knees. Now, obviously, as you can appreciate in these circumstances, it's very difficult not to say, and toes. <laughs> but he hasn't heard the rhyme. What kind of a lunatic? Everyone knew the rhyme. He just went, no. <laughs> Shoulders and knees. Knees and toes. I don't do toes. Do you have a problem with your toes? I could recommend someone to help you with your toes. A toes <laughs> No, I was just wondering, because you do shoulders and knees, you do knees and toes. No, I don't do toes. What about my heads? Why would I do heads? There's no joints in the head. I'm a joint specialist. I do shoulders and knees. Knees and toes. I don't do toes. <laughs> what about my and knees and mouth and nose? How many things are wrong with you? Get out! <laughs> I've also had five teeth out <laughs> this year. Okay? That's mad. I know. Four wisdom teeth, all of them, and another tooth I've had to have out because I've had terrible trouble with my teeth. It all started last year. I had this pain in my tooth because, you know, last year I was fine. My knee was fine. My calf was fine. My shoulder was fine. I was in pretty good nick. Then I had this pain in my tooth and I went to the dentist, you know, as you do. Open my mouth, which is key. Obviously, you have to. You have to be asked. <laughs> you don't just walk in. Ha! Huh? <laughs> so I sat in the chair, and he's like, he looks at my mouth. He's like, you know what? You've got a rotting wisdom tooth. I've got to take it out. 
I've got to take it out. It's rotting. And I didn't really mind. I didn't even know I had wisdom teeth, to be honest. I know that my wives had them out. So I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever you like. Also, there's a TV there. I was watching this morning. It's right in my face. I was watching Philip Schofield chatting away. I was like, yeah, go for your life. So he just got to work, and I just lay there, and I, I lay there for a while. I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe more than an hour. And I thought, I've been here ages. So I flicked my eyes over, you know, to see if the dentist was okay, and he wasn't. Oh, my God. It's quite stressed. Sort of sweat coming off his forehead. He was straining like this. So I tried to ask him if he was okay, which is hard when your mouth is completely numb, and he had, like, equipment in it. Came out as one sort of sound. Just one noise. Like a Northern Irishman saying mirror. That's an old moment. I don't know what's going on there. I was like, Aah! and he pulled back and he went, no, 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 I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. I thought it was something personal. I was like, oh my God, tell me what the matter is. You can't He said, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Congratulations, that's excellent. That's excellent for me. Well done. And I've never not been able to get somebody's tooth out. I can't get your tooth out. It's stuck. But okay, look, you need to calm yourself down. <laughs> okay, I'm not in any pain whatsoever. I've got no to be. I'm watching this morning. I'm actually completely fine. Go away, have a cup of tea. Sure. Come back. Try again. I believe in you. He says, the reason you don't feel any pain is I've numbed your mouth, okay? Look, and he passed me a mirror. I am not going to lie to you. Till the day I die, I will never forget the image that greeted me in the reflection, okay? This side of my face was literally twice the size of this side. It was bruising, I didn't even notice. My bib was covered in blood already, I didn't even see it. There was blood dripping out the side of my face like a sort of vampire. My eye was sort of closing. I was like, what the fuck are you done with you? <laughs> so this is what I was trying to tell him. We've got to get you out of here. We've got to get you to hospital. Follow me. And he ran out of the room. I just followed on behind him. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> I have to say, I thought that's a key story. The poor people in the waiting room, you know, they're sitting there with the, with the fish tank, reading old magazines, reassuring their children everything was going to be fine at the dentist's visit. I come out with bruising, blood all over my bed, blood coming out the side of my mouth. Hey, man. Have they always taken the dentist? Okay, Jules, you were right. Come with mummy. Come on, come with mummy now. Come on. I turned around to that idiot on reception. There's some woman there. She's like, would you like to book an appointment with the hygienist? The hygienist? I need a fucking plastic surgeon. Where's my dentist gone? I look out the door. This idiot is in his car. He's in his car. With the door open. He's still got his gloves on. He's going... Get in. Get in. Are you serious? Just get in. All right, all right. So I get in the car with this man. He starts hurtling through the streets. Literally 10 minutes earlier, I was in the dentist chair in relative comfort watching this morning. Now we're driving through traffic. He's 14. And so my wife actually called me up on the phone. Hello? Hello? Hello, darling. He's been at the dentist. I'm with the dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? I'm not at dentist. I'm with dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? No, I'm not at the dentist. I'm with the dentist. Why are you being so pedantic? I'm not mean. 
Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I'm in the car. Oh, you're on your way home. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> What is wrong with you? The dentist deep riding. The dentist is riding. No, he's riding. He's writing. The dentist did riding. The dentist is rising. The dentist did riding. The dentist is writhing. I'll call you a writer. You're calling a waiter. You're having lunch with the dentist. <laughs> Finally, we show up at this door. He's like, you see that door? I'm like, yeah. Go in there, okay? That's a hospital. They're going to treat you. You're going to be fine. They know to expect you. Just tell them your name. Everything's going to be fine. Get out. Come on. Get out. So I get out of this guy. He just drives off. He leaves me. I'm now standing on the pavement, right? I've still got the bib on, the blood-soaked bib. I'm standing there. I saw my reflection in the glass. I have to. I looked horrific. I was worried it was going to startle the receptionist. So I came in at my best angle. <laughs> Hello, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I was wondering. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Have you been attacked? So, no, I haven't been attacked. I don't go out in the bib expecting a fault. <laughs> I've been attacked so many times, I now wear a bib and clothing. <laughs> Apparently, you're expecting me. <laughs> so, um, okay, sir, can I take your name, please? Now, the problem is, and you'll know this if you're in a local anesthetic, you can't move your lips. I had no control of my lips. And you need that to do certain letters of the alphabet. The M, for example, greatly requires lip work. Mm. And I couldn't do it. I need that to identify myself. So she's like, can I take your name, please? Yes. I have Lacking Gaga. Akko Lacking Gaga. Akko Lacking Gaga. Ackle Lacking Gaga? Oh! What's my lip? Right, okay, I think the best thing for you to do is if you head down the corridor, take a seat in the waiting room, and we'll try to get to the bottom of this, okay? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was quite pissed off to recognise me, okay? I was on quite a lot of television. I know that this side of my face was pretty much, you know, unrecognisable, but this side was fine. I tried to jog her memory as I went down the corridor. I'm the only one. She said it was a so we're getting to the way to now, and the anesthetic sort of wear off. I feel a bit, you know, it hurts a bit now. I start making this sort of low, sort of E.T. type sound on my own in the corner. I tried to be nice, I tried to look at other people in there. Thankfully, I think for everybody, the nurse came in quite quickly. I call Akin Kaka. <laughs> I didn't respond to this. She came right up to my face. Excuse me. Are you Akko Akin Kaka? No. <laughs> so, what is your name? I don't know what I'm talking about. That is actually me. Sorry, Tux. This is my real name. I'm talking about 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 
they take me up into this room, sort of private room, and she's really nice to me now. She's like, oh my God, you've had a terrible day, haven't you, sir? Like, I have. I had a real horrible day. Please, you go help me. Like, yes, don't worry, don't panic at all. We do this all the time. We're going to give you a general anaesthetic. We're going to take your tooth out. Everything's going to be fine. If you just want to take all your clothes off and pop this hospital gown on, we'll take you straight through to surgery. For all my clothes off. <laughs> if you take all your clothes off, pop the gown on, we'll take you through. Why do I have to take all my clothes off? All the patients have to wear the hospital gown. That's, that's, that's hospital policy. You see, you don't think that I'm the family situation. I've got a problem with my tooth, <laughs> which is located in my lap. <laughs> I've got a tooth embedded in my arm. <laughs> they come all the way in my home clothes, but no. You'll know what it's like if you've been to the hospital. They humiliate you for no reason at all. You have to put this sort of piece of shit, floral, thin gown on the wrong way round with your ass hanging out. With this gown, with my literally my bare bottom hanging out of the mag, and you put this on for no reason. It's why everyone in the hospital has the clothes on the right way around. You can put it on like that. I come out. Is that your thought? Yes, that's perfect. Fuck off, it's perfect. I've got a tooth hanging out. And now I go, no, no, no. There's no reason why I have to have no gunner. If you think so, if you think so, if the floor is abhorrent, what on earth are you going to do for me under general anesthetic that requires access to my heart? I'm it. <laughs> there will be repercussions. Tell me what? Leap and Catherine! Don't take that turn with me, Mr. Akin Kaka. For the last time, <laughs> my name is Akin Kaka! <laughs> now I have to follow this woman down the corridor. Literally down the corridor. There's no way I'm going to walk down the hospital corridor with my arse just flapping away here. So people who just happen to be behind me looking at my arse. No, that is not going to happen. So I go down the, I go down the wall like this, unbelievable. And you know, you can walk out of my brother. Why have I got my brother? Somebody was actually doing the same thing towards me. All right, quickly, easy! Thank you. <laughs> Finally, they lie me down on the hospital bed and I'm thrilled now because I'm, my arse is concealed. I'm happy. The anaesthetist comes in, a very serious, sort of quite old man. Hello? I'm the anaesthetist, I'm going to give you a general anaesthetic. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to give you a small prick on your left arm. You're going to be knocked out immediately. You okay with that, Michael? My... <gasps> Uncle! <laughs> That's my name! He said, yes, I know exactly who you are. My three daughters are big fans of yours. <gasps> oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Then he put the needle in my arm, but he went, my wife and I not so keen, and put me out! <laughs> oh, I was like, you mother! <laughs> I woke up, I don't know how many hours later, two or three hours later, I didn't know where I was. Sometimes I wake up at home in a deep sleep, and I don't know where I am. This was the deepest sleep I've ever had, it was a general anaesthetic. I woke up, it was in bed, it was bright. It was hot. I'd come out of the covers, you know when, you know when like in a heat wave you come out, you know? When your ass is like the highest point, you come out of the duvet. You know when you're lying down, uh, at some stage during the night, the duvet sort of tucks in, and you just sort of roll out. <laughs> so I wake up. And within moments, I feel this breeze coming in the middle. <laughs> to see my entire family standing there. <laughs> what would you have my son said? Pants down, you're the loser. <laughs>
first of all, I'd like to say um, thank you to all of you for being here tonight, for coming to see my show. I mean, I depend on you. Without you, I'm nothing. I enjoy this more than anything. Thank you so much. Because if you knew what my life entails, you'd realize now, you know, how much it, this is the best part of my day. I basically sit and wait. I've been touring around the country for ages. It's great to be home. I live in London, obviously. And I've been in hotels all the time, endless hotels and hotels. You think they're fun, but it's also been a quite lot of shit hotels. I had literally the most probably embarrassing experience I've ever had the other day when I was checking into this hotel. This woman on reception, quite, quite cute, quite cute, very cute actually. Sort of eyelashes, seemed to be flirting with me. It's quite weird. I came in and said, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hello, she had an accent. I don't know where she was from. She was from somewhere else. Hello. I came in with all my bones. So, hello, are you checking in? It's always an odd question, isn't it, when you're walking to a hotel for the first time with all your bags. No, I'm pole vaulting. Is this wrong? Is this... <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Can I take your name, please? Can I take your name? So, yes, it's McIntyre. McIntyre. It's uh, Michael. Michael? Yes, Michael. Michael McIntyre. Okay. <laughs> You're with us for just the one night? So, yes, just, just one night. I'm just with you for one night. Not with you. You, know, you understand. I'm, I'm in the hotel. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Would like a newspaper in the morning? Would like a newspaper? So, no, I'm fine, thank you. I'll be, I'll be fine. No, I'll be fine without, thank you. Would like a wake-up call? Would like a wake-up call? No, don't film me. I'll be fine, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Then she asked me, which I suppose is a normal question, because it was just me for the one night, how many keys I wanted for the room. And she went, do you want one key? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what did you say? Do you want one key? <laughs> do I want one key? I can give you a wanky if you want. <laughs> Is that included in the wake up call? Because I'm not actually going for that. Nor will they actually give you a key anyway. I mean, keys work just fine. We all have keys. We'll go home tonight. We'll use a key to get into our home. But in all these hotels, they give you these like key cards and sort of pieces of plastic that work like 50% of the time. You go all the way to the room, it goes from red to red, red to red, red to red. <laughs> Some of them my whole stay just there because I don't want to go back to reception. Red, 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 red. Sometimes it goes green and then you get your bags and it's gone red again. Just let me in! <laughs> I always come and have a little peruse, my new home, what's it going to be like, you know, walk around. Certain aspects of hotel rooms greatly depress me. Tea and coffee making facilities. That's a bit of a low point, isn't it? So I've tried your tea and coffee making facilities with your mini kettle. It's one of the very boring moments in life when you have to take your mini kettle into the bathroom. You, you should never fill a kettle in a bathroom. You take it in there, you put it under the tap, right? Fill it up entirely with water. Then to get it out, you have to empty all the water. <laughs> you fill up the whole thing with energy in time, Kettle. Well, take Kettle out. I'll go through that for like half an hour. Then I have to transfer the bath. It's a very depressing situation. And those mini milks, what is it with those little UHT milks? And it's like a magic trick. It doesn't matter how many UHT milks you put into a coffee, it will never change colour. <laughs> you can see the white fluid landing in the coffee and then just disappearing. What's happened? I've just used 13 mini milks, I've still got a black coffee. The liquid isn't even rising. How is that even possible? But the biscuit is really rather thrilling because it's free. I eat the biscuit as soon as I see it. I don't know why. I get so attracted to a free biscuit. Shortbread. I don't even eat shortbread at home. If I walk into a hotel and there's shortbread, <laughs> just drop the wrapper. Not at home now. <laughs> Opening the drawers at random, empty, and I check them all, there's never anything in them. Empty, 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 empty. 
Oh, there's a Bible next to the bed, so you can pray for an upgrade. Thanks for your help. Oh, and can I just ask, while I have you all here, who at home, on their beds, by way of applause, has a duvet? Duvet people! Reveal your source! Duvet people! This is much what I expected. Who doesn't have a duvet? One person. Okay. So what I want to know is why literally in every hotel room I stay in, am I strapped into sheets? <laughs> Sometimes I have to make a brown blanket on the top. I just want to walk to a vacuum. Give me a duvet. I can't even the out of us. And they make the bed so tight that when you get in it, you're sort of strapped in it. <laughs> the door going, as soon as we get in, Mr. McIntyre, we will come to your aid. Just sit tight. Have you had enough to eat? I have the shortbread. I'm praying on the Bible. Save me, God, from these shit sheets. And the things they think you need in hotels. Oh, my God. Sewing kits. Sewing kits. Are they kidding? Who is sewing in hotel rooms? What do they think we're doing? What kind of people are they expecting to book? I booked a nice hotel for us this weekend. Going to catch up on our tailoring, I thought. <laughs> Take some Bible studies, have some black coffee, sleep on the outside of the sheets. It's party night. <laughs> have you ever forgotten your toothpaste in a hotel? They give you enough toothpaste for one tooth. Thanks for your generosity. <laughs> And the bathroom, oh my god, it's unbelievable. The more expensive hotel you stay in, literally, there will be lotions and potions and bottles for things you didn't even know existed. Bottles everywhere. The cheaper the hotel, there will be like one bottle that claims to be everything. Oh! The shampoo, conditioning, body wash, shaving cream, toothpaste milk. Milk? I might try this in my coffee. You know what I mean. <laughs> and inappropriately sized towels. These drive me crazy. You come out of the shower, and there's like 15 towels that get smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> towels that don't go round the human body. What is the point of a towel that won't go round a human being? Sometimes I have to just use the mat. At least it's fit. <laughs> People tend to get the side open. That tends to be the internationally recognised solution for the short town. Sort of leave that open. Then you come out complaining to my wife. Look at these towels. They don't even go the whole way around. It's very rare to go front open. Can you believe this? They don't even go the whole way around. Just hurry up. We're late anyway. Once, I got the sewing kit, and I sewed up all the towels to make a huge towel. Yes. <laughs> Look at me in my huge towel. Lying on the outside of my sheets in my enormous, newly sewed towel. Reading Genesis, drinking black coffee. Phoning reception, I think I'm ready for that wanky now, if you want to see. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming! Thank you,